Hi my loves, welcome back to our channel. My name is Jen and this is baby Ella. Say hi my love. Pinaikot na ay. Long, long na ay. Hi. Hi. In today's video, we would like to share to you on our TRA Migration Skills Assessment application form so that you will have an idea on how to I'm sorry, maybe? so that you will have an idea on how to prepare your own TRA Migration Skills Assessment form However, this TRA application form that I will be showing to you is a paper-based application because this was made six years ago <laughs> Oh, baby, I'm talking. I'm not finished. <laughs> Kiss lang. But now, TRA Skills Assessment is online already, but I'm pretty sure that some of the information that you need to prepare your own TRA application form are almost the same as the paper-based. So, let's get started. So, this is our TRA Skills Assessment application form. You don't worry about this because Trust Skills Assessment application is online now. But I just want you to see the information inside the Trust Skills Assessment application form. So this is the first page on the paper base, our payment details. So we put the applicant details, the name, the date of birth, trial reference number. But we don't have our trial reference number. This is our first time to apply TRA. So we just leave it blank. And then the agent is not applicable because we don't use an agent. And then the payment for our application is 1000 Australian dollars before. And how are you paying your application? We use the MasterCard, so we take the MasterCard. And then here is the declaration and privacy statement. We take yes. And just make sure that you read the privacy statement in part 10 of your application. Next is the TRA Migration Skills Assessment application form, which is here. So please answer all your questions and tick the relevant boxes. So part one is about your application. So there's a question, have you previously applied to Trades Recognition Australia? Then if you haven't applied, tick no, just like us. If you have applied before, then take yes and then provide the trial reference number here. Then the information about your nominated occupation. So what occupation are you seeking a migration assessment for? So we are seeking for electronic engineering technician and we need to put the code. If you do not know the code, well, anyway, I'll show you quickly. For quick shortcuts, you just type at Google Skills Occupation List Australia. So you can see some occupation list there, but if you want to see the full, then you click this. And now you can see that the skills occupation list is opening in this page. You can read those, but then in here you can search your occupation name if you know, for example, electronics engineering technician. And then here it is, the occupation, the electronic engineering technician and the code. ANC code 312412, so that's it. But you can also see the full list of skills occupation in Australia, like for example this one, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health Worker. Then the code is 411511, and the visa available in the assessing authority. So that's how you check for your ANC code on your skills occupation. Now let's go to the information about your passport and Australian visa. So you need to provide your passport number here, country of passport issue, what visa subclass are you intending to apply for. So we intended to apply subclass 190 or state sponsorship visa. Do you have a current Australian visa? So we take no. If yes, what is your Australian visa subclass? So you put here, but in our case we don't have, so we put NA or not applicable. Part 2, your personal details. You need to provide your first name, middle name, family name, date of birth, your gender, home or residential address. 
city or suburb, the state, the country, the postcode. And do you want your mail sent to a different address? So if you want, then you tick yes. I need to provide another postal address here. If not, then you just tick there no and the same postal and the same residential address would be fine. Then you need to provide your telephone number, mobile number, and your email. So there's a question here. Would you like to receive correspondence from Tra by email? So you want email, so we take yes. If you don't want, then take no. Part three is information about your agent or representative. If you do not authorize an agent, you don't have an agent because you are applying for yourself, so just take no just like us. And then all of these R and A are not applicable. Oh, but... If you have an agent, then you tick yes, and then you provide all the details here, name of your agent, business organization, the agent or representative address, the city or suburb, the state, country, telephone number, mobile number, postal code. And if you have an agent, all correspondence will go to your agent or representative. If you nominated an agent, would you like your agent or representative to receive your trial correspondence by email? So it's up to you either yes or no. We don't have an agent, so we just tick no and not applicable. Part 4, your relevant vocational qualification details. So there's a question here, how many years of general education have you completed? So our answer is 15 years, and that includes from grades 1 until you have completed your college. Have you completed a period of vocational training? And our answer is no, because our education is bachelor's degree. So it's not applicable to us, so we take no. If yes, was the training part-time or full-time? If yes, was the training part of an... an Apprenticeship, date training started and date finished. So you need to provide all those details here. And the qualification obtained. So what is your qualification? So for us, we obtained Bachelor of Science in Electronics and Communications Engineering. And the name of the training institution. So what's the name of your institution? You put it here. Name of authority that issued the qualification, so the school or college that you went in, and then the institution address, city or suburb, the state, the country, telephone number, and the website of your institution you provided here. And then the question below, have you completed any other relevant vocational training? So our answer is no. So if your answer is no, you don't need to provide all these the same questions as above. But if yes, then you need to enumerate all the qualifications that you obtained. If you don't have any other vocational courses, then you just put NA or not applicable and then go to part 5. Do you have any occupational licenses? So, have you been issued with an occupational license for your nominated occupation? If yes, then you tick yes and no, no. Then, because we tick yes, we need to provide the license obtained, and then the license number, name of licensing organization, the organization address, the city or suburb, the country, the telephone number, and the postcode. And then the licensing organization website. Now let's go to part 6, your employment at the required skill level. So there's a question here, at what age did you start your employment in your nominated occupation? So you put it here, when have you started working on your occupation? The most recent employer's company name, employer's address, See to your suburb, country, telephone number, your occupation with this employer, and then the postcode, I'm sorry, date employment started and finished. So in here, when did you start working with this job? 
and then the finished is you put the current date if you are still working with your current employment that's what we do and the second employer if you have a second employer here but we don't have any other employer other than the first employer so we put na or not applicable so just the same you need to put other relevant employment here on part seven but we don't have so we just put an a and a and now let's go to part eight which is the description of your work so you need to enumerate the duties or tasks that you have undertaken how often did you do each task or duty for example daily weekly or monthly what types of machines, equipment, tools, instruments, and materials you have used, the frequency with which you use them, details of any supervisor or responsibility you have had, whether you were self-employed or employed by an organization. So if the space are not sufficient, just add another page of this part. So here is an example of detailed job description for you. I started working at Tardine Philippines Limited on May 7, 2007 as a test technician or board repair specialist and I am already in 8 years of service in the company. This industry is the leading supplier of automatic test equipment to test IC, system on chip, or memory products. Tardine Cebu branch is a repair center to support after-sales AT systems which provides board repair services of system and mainframes, motherboards, and channel cards to maintain accurate functionality and efficiency of automatic test equipment testers, both by customers around the world. I am currently a test technician and team leader of the group, having A3, A5, Catalyst, and Tiger Teradyne test systems with a total of 13 systems and 6 debuggers. My daily duties... And responsibilities as test technician include but not limited to the following listed below. Number one, requesting or kitting defective electronic circuit boards of ATS systems from warehouse, from warehouse defective stocks, performing visual inspection of the electronic circuit boards. If there are burnt or missing components, short circuit, circuit open traces, burnt PCB and other suspicious or abnormal appearance in the circuit prior to testing, to avoid high risk of damaging the systems while testing the boards. Number three, doing pre-testing by inserting the boards that are defective into the automatic test equipment to verify the failure endorsed by the customers. Number four, performing proper setup and installation of automatic test systems, electronic, electrical, and mechanical parts, and run the required checkers or software programs needed in the testing operation. So that's the example and this is page 1 until 4. So I guess we did 4 pages of this part, part 8, and it's up to you how many pages you can consume. It really depends on your tasks. Now let's go to part 9, privacy statement. So I can't read all of those, there are too many words. You need to read all of them online, I think. And then the disclosure. And here we go to part 10. Where is the part 10? Here. Part 10, privacy consent and declaration. So you need to read and understand all of these. And then at the bottom, there's a declaration you need to sign here, applicant signature, and the date when did you sign this application form. And if you have an agent, you put an agent here, and then the date. So I guess that's all for the Trust Skills Assessment Application Form. Thank you. I am not a visa expert here, and I am not also a migration agent. And definitely not a lawyer but I am just a nobody that is giving you some information that might help you to process your own visa application or skills <laughs> assessment
<laughs> what are you talking about? I'm not finished. <laughs> what? You want to say something? Say hi to daddy. Hi to daddy. <laughs> hi daddy. <laughs> I am just a nobody that is giving you some information that might help you to process your own skills assessment and Australian visa in the future. So if you're planning to submit your own skills assessment on your relevant assessing authority, or if you want to submit or lodge your own Australian visa application, please make sure that you always check on the website, the Home Affairs Australia website, for any updates or changes of the laws and requirements pertaining to your visa. Thank you so much for watching us. See you when I see you. See you when we see you. Bye. We love you. Bye. Say bye. Say bye to the camera. Bye. Oh, bye. Thanks for watching. Bye. You baby feet. Bye. Here are soup. Pumpkin soup is very hot. It's very hot. You can eat it later. Thank you, God, for the gift. Lord, Amen. Say thank you, my love. Say Amen.
Ika, bu? Yes, Gracie. Ano dia itu tadi? So that we can go to Tasmania. Why are you looking at me? Come on, you go. Say it. 